Nice cross. Oh! oh, oh my God, he's hurt. James caught him. He's hurt. Yeah. He's taking a lot of James shots. James Justin James here, Guitar Hero, uh, here on the Catchweight Update. This is Catchweight Interview number f 15. I'm pretty sure it's 15. Yes, 15. Number 15. Um, how, how you doing, man? You're in Miami with that awesome <laughs> shirt. Yes. Came down here. Man, beautiful weather, 80 degrees. Get a little training on. Uh, came down here to do some fishing. Um, just down here, uh, you know, enjoying life right now for till tomorrow. Back to the grind tomorrow. Hell so. yeah, hell yeah. Where so where, where are you training at in, in Florida? Uh, no, I, I, I'm just here with the four. I was here for a couple of days for a fishing trip. Gotcha. Uh, it's just me, a teammate of mine. Uh, we're, we're getting a little roll. We're getting a little bit of work in rolls and running and shit like that. Nothing, uh, nothing too extensive. I had a rough uh, past week of training. Gotcha. Uh, so come here, do some spear fishing, relax for a little bit. And, uh, you know, try to refocus, uh, stay focused for the next month. I feel that. I definitely feel that. Um, so there's a lot of things I want to, I guess, line up. Uh, you got, so between you and Austin Tweedy, you guys coming up on, uh, on May 29th, but there's a couple things. So I want to give you like the same benefit that I do all my fighters. Right. So like, <laughs> I know, I know I had him on first, but you know, what I, what I typically do with these interviews, um, I basically, uh, you know, I go over your background, I go over a couple fights and then, you know, we talk about your upcoming fight. Um, so why Guitar Hero? Let's start there. <laughs> Let's start uh, there. Well, I mean, Guitar Hero, I haven't went by that in a long time. You know, I've asked Sure Dog to take it off. Oh, I'm know. so sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. I'm not, it's not a, it's not a salty subject by any yeah. means. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I've even, I just don't think they want to. They, they like the way it rings, I guess, for the site. But I was in college and, uh, we we're at a, I don't remember if we were at a frat or at the dorms. We were drinking, having some beers and, uh, a buddy of mine uh, that I, I used to train, I think it was Crookshank, actually. Uh -huh. Darren, Crookshank, we were college roommates, and I think he dared me to walk out to my next fight, like wearing the guitar here, because I was always playing it in the dorm room. <laughs> and, uh, I did, and I rocked it for like, I don't know, a half dozen fights or eight fights. And like, I try to play, or not play, but I pretend like I'm strumming the guitar as I'm playing the song uh, <laughs> as I walk to the ring. And I did it like six or eight times, and then I turned pro, and I was like, ah, I'm going to kind of get away from that. And, yeah, uh, that game's pretty I, dead now. <laughs> There's everyone, no... yeah, exactly, the game kind of <laughs> And uh, everyone still refers to me as that because I was the guy that wore a shirt that says I shaved my balls for this. <laughs> and I strummed my guitar coming down to the ring, so. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Uh, you know, the hot game now is Fortnite, so you might want to get on that. Yeah, my son is, I mean, fuck, god damn it. Don't even. <laughs> Start on Fortnite. Right, that's what I talk about, all right? Fuck. Listen, that might be the next thing. You know, streaming's in. All the all the athletes are getting on the esports bandwagon, so you might have to do that next. I'm telling you, man. I I, I was big on PUBG for a minute. And I had my two twin, and uh, you know, I, I was sitting by myself one day after like a six hour session. I'm like, what am I doing <laughs> for six fucking hours? Like. Um, and <laughs> my uncle, my uncle is a is an airborne ranger or was an airborne ranger. And he's a police officer now in California. And uh, when he came back from uh, when he retired from the army, all he would do is play Battlefield. Like that's all he would right. do. Um, and and then it was on PC too to to give it that extra sure. layer. And then uh, you know he's like he did the same shit. You know <laughs> even even into the kids he's like he's like I can't do this anymore. I got to be a police officer. It was getting to a point where I was skipping work and skipping training. <laughs> Like ah fuck it, I don't have a fight coming up. Let's let's fucking PUBG. Yo, PUBG is a great game though. Like I I, I really? like it. I like it. It's like uh, it gets Very that realistic great. element into it. Yes, I agree. Compared to Fortnite, there's no building bullshit. Like it's a lot. I can't more do it. I, and it, it, it. I can't either. One, I can't either. One thing I'll give Fortnite is that uh, this is now no longer an MMA podcast. We're talking about video games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I'll give Fortnite, they did. They have done a lot with just a free platform that they offer to like the sure. entirety of the world. So you know, I, that, kudos to them for that. Crossplay as well. I don't think PUBG does that yet. It does not. It and you know they um you know PUBG ha has faltered a little bit uh, as far as like they they fucked up. They put they tried to like release a console version to try to like keep up with Fortnite to keep up with the Joneses and it did real poorly and people have like a bad taste in their.
mouth versus uh, like people were like I, what the first one was like h1z1 or arma or something like that or um and then it just kind of spiraled from there but uh yeah man those, those they're, you know all in all i like i like the game mode um as as far as like it's something i can just jump into and then just get out i don't have to get, get too invested in it or anything like that yeah. so well, I'm like I'm the opposite, man. Once I start playing, you know, you take like an eighth place or seventh place, like fuck it, one more game. I'll win <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, my boss is calling, or I'm late for the gym and all that bullshit. So, <laughs> what do you what do you what do you do during that? So you so you have a, so you have re, you have regular you have a regular day job. Uh, my life is MMA and extreme couture. Uh, okay. I live one mile from the gym. I work there. I train there. I hang out there. My friends are there. Uh, you know, on a typical day, I'll wake up. You know, like on, if on a boot camp day, I'll wake up 6 a.m. I'll run a class from like 6 to 7. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll train my, I'll train like kickboxing from 9 to 10. And then I'll do like gi jiu-jitsu from like 10 to 11. And then right. I'll try to book clients. Uh, then I'll have pro practice at like, like 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And then I'll run like a wrestling class or a uh, kids, uh, I do kids uh, training, like kids cross training and kids grappling as well. So uh, I, my days are pretty busy going, going through, uh, at extreme couture. So, so, uh, I, excuse my ignorance. So you train at ex- oh. extreme, extreme couture. How, how are there a lot of those? Cause I know another gentleman that, that trains over there, uh, Rodney James Edgar. I, I had him on the podcast a couple, uh, I, I don't know if that was in, I think it might be in, uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm out, I'm out of Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, extreme, uh, Las Vegas. Correct. That's, that's where he I trains at. Extreme couture in Toronto. Okay. Uh, but, uh, uh, Rodney James, why does that sound so familiar? I'm, I'm, I, yeah, if he trains in Vegas, I'm sure I've been there for eight years. He's got, he's got a couple. I think he's got a couple amateur bout or maybe one amateur bout. But he's, he's, ma- he's mainly a journalist and an actor. He's a, he's a, he does sure. MMA journalism um, okay. over there. Um, yeah, no, I, I had him on, and, and you know, he's a great guy. So if you see him in the gym, tell him I said hi. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely, definitely. Nice, nice. Um, okay, so I guess we'll just get into your 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 background. Um, so so how did how did you get into fighting? Like, where did you, where did you start out of uh just getting into sport combat sports in general? Because I heard you. Yeah, had, uh... Uh, it's it's. I mean, it was kind of a, it kind of just fell in my lap. You know, I was a college or I was a cl- uh, high school wrestler. Okay. Uh, played football, and uh, you know, uh, after my senior year of wrestling, um, you know, I ended up losing to Jakar Klaus at the state tournament. Okay. I don't know if you, I'm sure you know who Jakar Klaus is. No idea. Yeah, he fights in the UFC 155. Okay. Um, yeah, he's trained out of Phoenix now. But anyways, I lost to him in the state finals tournament. Um, and after that, you know, I was kind of bummed. And a guy just asked if I ever want to try MMA. Um, I didn't really want to. I didn't really care to get hit or punched in the face. <laughs> um, um, he ended up talking me into it. Yeah. And I by guillotine my first fight yeah. in like two minutes. And I was like, fuck that. I, I can't go out like that. I'll right. do one more and I win. Then I'll retire. Well, then I won my next one, and then it was just downhill after that. Uh, you know, I end up having uh, 50 amateur fights. Uh, God through. damn! Um, so we're talking about uh, uh, losing the wrestling bout. Uh, you had 50 amateur fights, just fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, 47 amateur fights. I wanted to hit 50 by the time I turned pro. Yeah. Um, I just got to get cutting weight for free. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I hit, 40, I hit 47 amateur fights, uh, four years collegiate wrestling. That's for me and uh, Darren Crookshank. You know, got in touch. We're really close friends. Uh-huh. Uh, that's actually how I came to Vegas the first time. Gotcha. Uh, we came out to Vegas to train, and I just happened to step back. So, so, so you said you were you, you were fighting in high school? Uh, yeah, my senior year of high school, uh, like towards the end of the year. My first fight was like uh, June, I believe, June of two thousand and seven was my first amateur fight, and I lost in like two minutes. So, oh man. Um. So okay. So you were fighting in high school. So what? So why fifty? Why you just that's what you wanted? Uh no, it just I just was <laughs> when I was wrestling uh for the NCAA okay. and you can't professional. Uh, not think not saying that I thought I was good enough to turn pro. Right. Uh, but uh, I, you know I just in, in Michigan it wasn't regulated for a long time as well. So you could <laughs> fight. As, there were times where I fought two three times in one week. Um, they had a. Uh, they did a four-man tournament. Um, uh, one time I fought twice in one night. Uh, one time I fought Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, it just it just was crazy. Towards I mean, there was times where I was fighting twelve times a year. You know, so that's crazy uh, as hell. I mean, like I mean, you come from that wrestling background. You, you that's that's normal as far as far as like just getting through all those matches in one day. Um, I, was, I, I think that that's, that stood me out a lot because yeah, just yeah, exactly. Like, you know, in wrestling, you wrestle on Wednesday, then you wrestle on Saturday, and then you have to wrestle the following Monday. Yeah, so I, I was always ready. I never needed long layoffs. I always was in half-ass shape, and I was always showing up. 
Clearly, if 47 fights, Jesus Christ. I don't have, I have like three street fights in my entire life, and they did not go very well. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, wow, that's crazy as hell. I've, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before. They had that. I didn't I didn't know that, that you were allowed to fight uh, that young at, if, at an amateur level. Uh, at 17 years old, uh, my birthday, I was 17 when I took my first fight, and I need, my dad needed to sign the waiver. <laughs> wow. That's, in, right. that's complete insanity. Um, and then I guess fast forward to, so when was your first professional bout again? I'm sorry. I want to say it was 2013. Okay. Um, I make my debut in Michigan for uh, big John's MMA up North at uh, Sault Ste. Marie. And, uh, uh, I won by Omo Plata in the first round. Is that it, big John McCarthy, right? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no uh, big, big John, um, we call him up uh, Uper big John. Okay. He, he holds the old, uh, MMA show still actually, uh-huh. uh, just called big John's MMA. Okay. Awesome. Uh, that's uh, that's a name. That's yeah. That I, I, I was I associate with Big John McCarthy this whole time. But sure. I, I've seen I've seen that I've seen that uh, that promotion a few times with a couple fighters before. Yeah. Um. Okay. So so you so all right. So you started all of this out in Michigan. Correct. Okay. You started out in Michigan. Um. And now you're back there in the WXC. I actually know um um on, on top of Austin Austin Tweed, I know uh, Willis Black as well too from uh, from sure. the WXC. Uh, very good yep. fighter. Awesome friend. Awesome dude. Yeah, um. My last fight was against Willis's teammate Brandon Noble. Oh wow, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I wanted. I want. That was one of the fights I want to talk about. Um. So now, okay. So now we're in. I guess I will say present day, at, for lack of better words. Um. So the two fights that I ended up watching were on the UFC Fight Pass, which you can watch at any time if you're a a a, a, a viewer and you want to know and you want to know more about uh, Justin James's fight style. Uh, it was UFC uh, not UFC uh WXC uh, seventy two and WXC seventy five. Those are the two fights that I that I watched. And um, Noble was the most recent one on seventy five. Correct. Um, and, uh, I mean, like he, he was really good. <laughs> like, like for you, for you to, for you to go out there and, and finish him the way you did is, is a big deal. Like, uh, you, you know, he's, he was much bigger than you. He was about five ten, I think five ten, five eleven. Um, so, so on top of him just being a massive human being, like obviously he's not 155 pounds. Uh, he didn't look like he was 155 pounds. Um, I, he made weight. He made weight legit. We both made weight. We both, uh, we weighed in at like 160. Right. Well, no, no, I mean, like, I, you, I know that you guys made weight. I'm just saying, like, 5'10". I mean, he's probably walking around 185 pounds. <laughs> so, sure. you know? um, sure. so big, that's a big guy. Um, and you went out there and you finished him in, 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 in a spectacular... Fa- it was, like, really savage the way you, you were holding his head and, 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 and banging him in, into it. It was... That's cr- what's, is that something you practice? What, how do you what, how do you work that into that? I mean, it was kind of just, like, in the heat of the moment. I actually thought James Lee was going to stop the fight a little quicker. Yeah. Uh, I saw him fall. I knew the fight was just about over. I just had to jump on him quick, uh, yeah. so I didn't let him recover. Um, after about two punches, he wasn't moving. He wasn't trying to defend himself. Right. Uh, you know, I, I actually uh, I didn't like the stoppage by the ref. It should have been stopped about five to ten punches sooner. Um, again, yeah, you hit him a uh, lot. <laughs> friend, friend of mine. Like uh, we yeah. talked prior to the fight. Yeah. We've talked. I've invited him to come out to Vegas. Yeah. Um, I, he, there's no reason for him to take that take that extra damage. Yeah, I mean, like that, you know, your style, uh, 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 and no disrespect to uh, Brandon Noble, but like, um, your your the way the way you fight, I guess, as far as far as like wrestling, and and Austin Austin Tweedy even made a comment about it. Um, you know, with your wrestling base, I see that a lot with wrestlers. Uh, you know, ground and pound, getting on top of them and and get, getting like it's not necessarily like techniques that you like work, um, sure. specifically, but it's uh, you know you can see how how you use your leverage and how you how you use your your wrestling technique to stay on top of somebody and, and finish them. Definitely. So. so and that was uh, that was uh, insane to watch. And then I watched you fight uh, Devin Brown, uh, the WXC seventy two. So what I noted most about that was your level of patience. Um, you know, you had you had him in that gee team for a long time. <laughs> like he like he, he was, he's fighting it. He's fighting as much as he possibly could. But you know, eventually you got him. It was it was very weird weird angle that you got that that gee team. It's just uh, I mean we I, we just kind of fell into it. I mean yeah. it wasn't a plan. Um, it wasn't the game plan by any means. Right. Uh, in that talk leading up to the fight, I thought we were going to get in a, we we're going to be in a fist fight. Right. Uh, he turned to a wrestler. I mean, he came at me like you said he was going to, but within 20 seconds he took a shot. I mean, I know he was a state champion wrestler. He's a great wrestler, uh, but I'm just too big and too strong. Right. And uh, when he and he just wouldn't give up. He kept going for my legs. Kept going for the legs even when I had the front headlock and uh, he just happened to fall in it. I knew I had. I knew it was tight. Uh, I knew it was tight, especially when he rolled to his back. He conceded, mm-hmm. hoping I would let go of the choke, I'm assuming. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm like a pit bull on a bone, man. Once I sunk that in, it was going was to go no matter what. Yeah, yeah you got to kick him in the balls and asshole to get off. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so wait, so um, on that second fight, when you won, you won via knockout uh, over over uh, or TKO over over Brandon Noble. They said I heard the announcer said that uh, you were you were the first double champ in the in the WXC. Correct. So you only have two fights in the WXC up up until that point, right? Uh, I you know as an amateur, I I feel I I feel that I fought for him before as an amateur a long time ago. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> But I, I can't think of when or who. Yeah. I mean, he was 47 fights. I'm sure somewhere along the line I fought for them as an amateur. Okay. But as a pro, I think, uh, yeah, that was my first two for the WXC. That's a big deal. <laughs> That's yeah. a big deal. Your, fir- your first two fights in the WXC are, are for championship belts. Sure. Um, and then and then you you know, you know handily and, and definitively won both of those uh, championship fights. So, you know... As as much as I, I I like and respect Austin Tweedy, he's got his hands full as far as far as sure. as far as an opponent. Um, so then I guess we'll, we'll go into that. Uh, May 29th, This is Warrior Wednesday three. Is this something they're doing? Um, uh, as as the uh, because they have WXC seventy two and seventy five. How how does that work out? These Warrior Wednesdays. <laughs> uh, uh, the Wednesday. So they just signed a, the deal with Fight Pass, and they just right. they don't have. Fight Pass doesn't have anything going else on on Wednesday, so if there's anybody that wants to tune in to watch uh, live MMA on Wednesday, it was the best thing for them. It worked out because, you know, War Extreme and, you know, the name ended up playing out perfect for it. Um, it's just another day in the office. I don't care if we fight on a Monday, a Friday, a Saturday, a Wednesday. <laughs> it's all – yeah, I've been, I've been around this. I, I don't give a fuck. I'll fight on – after church. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. Let's make T-shirts. We're printing T-shirts. Fuck it. I'll fight after church. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, now that's fantastic. And, and I, you know, uh, not just because I have a podcast for MMA, but you know, the big, the two big ones that stand out to me on fight pass are the, the WXC and, uh, the CFFC as far as like production value, caliber of fighter, um, sure. you know, the commentary, all this stuff. And WXC is a very good promotion. I, I, you know, I very much wa- enjoy watching those fights, um, sure. going out on Wednesday. So the, um, so the 29th is coming up, um, so you know, there's there's been a little bit of barbs, I guess, back and forth between you and Austin Tweedy as far as like, um, you know, leading up to the fight. Uh, the, I, I wrote down some notes from the last thing he said. He was talking a little spicy during his interview. Uh, he feel he feels that um, that you don't think he deserves a, a title shot um, or, or something around those around those lines. Or did, did, are you unhappy with the process of how this unfolded? Are you unhappy with how his his rise to to the shot? Or uh, tell me tell me your thoughts on that. It's you know I, I saw I saw his interview. Um, I think he's uh, misunderstood. It has nothing to do with him personally. Right. It's uh, how things were told to me. I don't care. I, listen, I, I I'll fight Austin Tweedy again anytime. I'll fight anybody anytime anywhere. It's not about the caliber. He's a he's a very tough, big, strong dude. It's how it was talked to. Mm-hmm. So even if you talk to Brandon Noble, because Brandon and I talked about this after the fight, mm-hmm. uh, you know we fought for the championship. Well now I tune in, you know, and then the idea was him. And uh, Putman, we're going to fight, and then I got the winner. The, the winner of Noble and I got the winner of that fight would be the first contender fight for the mm-hmm. belt. Well, I'm watching with my team, uh, watching their fight, and they announced him as an undisputed WFC champion. I was like, what the fuck? Like, mm. so, I hit up, so I hit up the promoter. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? This is not how, this is not how what we talked about. It had right. nothing to do with Austin. I, it could have been anybody. It just happened right. to be. It just happened so, to be him. It, yeah, it just happened to be him. I, I don't I don't know the guy. I know he's a tough cat. He's eleven and two with eleven finishes. I mean, it, that says enough. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it could have been anybody. It's not. I I don't not like the guy. Um, I <coughs> don't. I, yeah, I, I personally don't care. He doesn't affect me at all. Gotcha. Um, so for him to take it personal. I mean, don't let's not jump to the conclusion. So, anyways, so Mike, the promoter, told me that uh, we would be fighting the following month, April twenty fourth. Right. Are uh, there? Cool. Sounds good. We'll, we'll squash it then. And then my manager calls me. He goes, "There's no chance Tweedy's going to fight you. He's going to find a way to back out." Huh. I said, "Ah, we're, we're booked. I got the. We're, we're talking. We're in cahoots with the contract. He's good to go." My manager reiterates, "He's going to find a way to back out." I was like, "All right, whatever." Not less than five days, or not more than five days later, I get a call from Mike. Oh, Austin hurt his abdomen. I don't know how. I don't know the specific. I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" Huh. Like. Had nobody said anything like he's not going to look for a way out, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. Right. But to think, I just was told that oh, he's going to find a way out. Right. Um, it's not taking away from his toughness. He's a fucking tough dude, he's man. A tough guy, guy, strong as fuck. He's a monster. He's five foot nine. You know, he looks like a fucking bodybuilder. <laughs> but all, that, all, all all that show muscle doesn't impress me. It, 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 I'm, not, I'm not afraid of Austin tweeting in any, in any sort of way. Hey, anybody, anyone can anyone can catch it. You know, uh, we, 
we've seen right. we, we've seen it at every, we've seen it at every and that's no disrespect to Austin Tweedy at all. But as far as the fight game goes, that's the reality of the situation, right? Like you can be as big as as tough as you possibly want, you can still get caught. It, it, it's, Definitely. Um. So yeah, I mean, like you know, th- as a as a as a fight fan, I, you know, obviously you you don't really give a shit about my opinion as much as far as like you know, storylines and what I like, but this is like an interesting storyline to me as far as, you know, uh, that, but you know, knowing, given that background, I didn't, I didn't know that I didn't, I didn't really look too far into it. There's not that much information out there. Um, as far sure. as I, as far as I am aware, this is the only time I've ever, I've ever heard of, of this. Sure. Um, you know, again, like you had, like you had reiterated, this is not to take anything from Austin Tweedy, but that is an, that is an interesting development as far as, uh, as far as this fight. And, and, you know, it adds, it adds a little bit extra mustard, right? So, sure. um, you know, going into this fight, I know, I, you know, as, as you're a professional, both of you are professionals at the end of the day, yep. and he didn't seem too, uh, upset, but you know, he, as, as far as, uh, you know, taking it personal, um, he, you know, he, he even, he, again, the other barb that I, 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 I read that he said during my interview, um, he says that you're very well, he, he, he obviously you both respect each other, right? This, but this is a fight. You got to get in the cage. You got to fight each other. Um, he feels that he's a better well-rounded fighter than you are. Um, in, in, in response, do you have any response to that? I mean, he can say what he wants, man. The guy's had what, uh, like, uh, 13 professional fights. That's cute. Right. I fought for times in one year. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's all, it's all going to be the same bullshit. Oh, he's never fought someone like me. He's never fought someone as strong as me. I'm going right. to knock him out in the first round. Like, I've heard it all. It's all the same old fucking right. bullshit. He can say what he wants. And that's <laughs> fine. He's going to bring it. He's going to be in shape. He's going to be slinging. But there, there's a lot of things in this world I am afraid of, and Austin Tweedy isn't one of them. What are the, those other things? I'm curious because you are a murderer. So, like, what it, what scares a murderer? Um, uh, Let's see. What am I afraid of? Crocodile. Afraid of height. So, I am afraid of height. Oh, it's dude. Fun. Honestly, on this balcony facing this way because <laughs> because I don't want to look over the over the banister. Yeah, I I uh, yeah, I used exactly. to do because you know like all tough guys go to summer camp. So I went to summer camp when I was about uh, f- from ten to I was about sixteen years old. And um, when you when you turn sixteen, you can you can train to be a counselor at the camp. And this is shouts oh. out to Fairview Lake um, in New Jersey. <laughs> And, sure. uh, and one of the things you have to do for your training is climb up this fucking 50 foot tree. Uh, uh-huh. and, um, and you know, going up, isn't that big of a deal. Cause you're kind of like sure. looking at the tree and then I get yes. to the top and you're on, there's like this platform and you got to cross a, a fucking zip line to, it's like, it's like, it's like maybe 30 yards to another tree, but you get, it's not like you hook up and you zip that you got to, cl- you got to yeah. walk across this wire bridge. And it took me like 30 minutes to get across because I could, I was like shaking. I was like, Sure. <laughs> I was hyperventilating and shit. I can't do heights. I can't do it. I'm a deer hunter, and I get up in the tree stand, and every now and then that sun comes out, and I can see the ground. It's like fuck. Yep, I, I feel you, man. So, wait, so you, so you go hunting. You go. How do you go hunting in Las Vegas? Oh, you broke broke up. I didn't hear you. Sorry. So where, where do you go hunting? I don't know a lot of hunting in Las Vegas. Oh, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, actually, Las Vegas is. Yeah, you broke up there for a second. Okay. Um, Las Vegas has awesome hunting. Uh, really? Hunt mule deer, elk, uh, coyotes. I'm, if there's anything I like to do more than MMA, it's hunt. That's awesome. So, so is it like a like a ranch? Uh, Miami and uh, you know deer season. Uh, I'm sorry. Say again. Is it like is it like some sort of ranch? Like is it like a, like a ran- like ranches? Or? No. Nope. It's all free range. Hmm. Um, there's a. There's you know, people mistake Las Vegas as Nevada, which Las Vegas is in Nevada, but it's not Nevada. Right. You drive six hours north of Las Vegas, and you get some of the biggest animals you'll ever see in your life: elk, uh, mule hmm. deer, uh, mountain lions. Um, it's it's uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. That's all. I mean, I've never been hunting before, but I do love shooting guns. So, <laughs> do 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 you do um do you, do you shoot or do you bow hunt or or? I, I like bow. I primarily like bow hunting, um, I, but I do gun hunt as well. Mm. If I had to choose one over the other, I'd choose bow hunting. Yeah, it seems like to be the Go more on. athletic. If you're an athlete, it seems like to be the, the more athletic of the of the ventures, right? Uh, no, no question. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, the hiking you have to be in. Like when I went elk hunting, we went elk hunting for two weeks last year in Colorado. Literally, we had to hike ten miles in with our packs, uh-huh. um, camp, and then we're living off the land because you can only carry. You can't really carry food, so right. uh, for two. It's uh, grown man shit. You got to get right up on the elk. Um, I think the elk that I shot was at you know 15 yards. Yeah. Uh, so 
true grown man shit. So do you like, is that incorporated? Is that like free time for you? Or is that something you like incorporate with your, like your train around your training or anything like that? Cause that's, 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 that's uh, marathon I, I, man shit. I incorporate my training around hunting. If I can hunt, <laughs> you know, it's uh hunting's number one to me. You know, it's uh yeah. like, right. I don't like to, so Austin and I were supposed to fight April 24th. Right. This past day. Uh, the reason I'm on this trip is because I booked this trip for after the fight. Gotcha. Well, since I already booked it. I couldn't, you know, couldn't return it, I right. guess. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> Huh. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's a physical and mental grind to say the least, man. It's hunting, uh, like big game hunting, like real big game hunting. Uh, it can be really fucking tough. <laughs> Maybe you can be my guide next time out in Las Vegas. Anytime you, anytime you come to Vegas, man, hit me up. I'll take you out. I'll, sh- I'll show you the town, man. I'll show you oh, what's yeah. up. Don't take me out. Like, don't kill me, kill me. You know, I like to blow stuff up too. So. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, is that, that's, that's basically pretty much what I had. Um, did you, did you want to plug anything? I know, I know you're out there doing fishing and, but, uh, you have like businesses or anything else or, or sponsors, anything else that you want to plug in? Uh, no, not as right now, man. Self equipment out of Oklahoma, you know, they're always supporting me. Uh, you know, um, I'm just looking forward to this fight. Uh, Austin, like I said, uh, it's no disrespect to Austin as a fighter. Uh, I think we're going to go and put in a good show. Um, I think, uh, you know, he's going to come out guns blazing, man. Look at the guy. He looks like a fucking bodybuilder, bro. Right. He's He's fucking ginormous. He hits like a truck. He kicks like a truck. He's you fast. Know? He's fast. fast. He's way more athletic than me. Like, yeah. it's, it's not even. But with that being said, I'm very durable. And uh, I'm, I have no prediction for the fight. <laughs> uh, besides that I'm going to be standing in front of him for 25 minutes straight. Uh, I'm going to be putting him on the ground. I'm going to be putting him on the fence, taking him down whenever I want. He has a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, and that's great. Yeah. But I'm a black belt in wrestling and a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So I'll dictate where this fight goes. If I want to take him down, I'll take him down. I'll grind down him a little bit. Um, if we want to keep it standing, we'll keep it standing, man. I don't want to get hit by that overhand right, I'll tell you that. Well, I'll put me up on that. Man, it sounds like you're ready. It sounds like you're ready for this shit. I'm excited. I mean, I'm ready. I mean, let's let's do the damn thing. Like I said, I'll be there standing in front of Austin Tweedy for 25 minutes, um, May 29th. That's that's all there is to it. It's I, I, I've already I fought guys like him um, countless times. Uh, you know, I fought heavier hitters, uh, better grapplers, better strikers, more athletic guys. You know, that he's not bringing anything to the table that I haven't already seen or don't have to play. Or you know, not something to prepare for. You know. I'm, I'm preparing with guys, you know, with like Kevin Lee and, right. uh, you know, uh, I mean, I could go down the list, Brad Tavares and stuff like that. Like, it's just something he can't, you know, I, I think I did listen to a bit of his interview. He talked about, you know, how surreal it was when he went to the PI and he was running next to Forrest Griffin. Yeah. I've been on the same mat as Forrest Griffin for 10 years. I've been on, you know, <laughs> Forrest and I were friends, right. or, uh, training partners and teammates, you know, 10 years ago before he retired. Yeah. Evan Dunham, Mike Pyle, Martin Kamen. These, these guys are they're all real people. I'm, I don't get shell shocked by that. These are people I train with every single day. Right. I moved with to Vegas away from my family. If Austin Tweedy thinks he's going to get in my way of achieving what I want to do, he's sadly mistaken. Whew. That's going to be the promo. I'm cutting that. <laughs> I'm cutting that. Um, as far as far you know, you know, you're a super personal guy. Um, you know, you're, you're great to talk to. I had fun talking. Not that I didn't have fun talking to Austin Tweedy. I had sure. fun talking to Austin Tweedy as well. Um, Oh, uh, b- uh, before before I go, you had you had fought in uh, in Bellator, correct? Correct. In Bellator, so Bellator. say that again. I had a first round knockout in Bellator. That's amazing. Um, so as far as far as like pedigree and 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 and, and meeting all these people and all the, and all the professional, you know, obviously it doesn't phase you because you've been you've been doing this for a little bit. Um, sure. What? I completely forgot my thought. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But uh, uh, but as as far as fighting in Bellator, that's, that's fantastic. He's you know Austin's got his hands full. He's, you're 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 both veterans as far as far as uh, you know the, the uh, fighting at a high level, uh, fighting at a professional level. So I'm 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 super excited and I will be tuned in for this fight, guaranteed. Like <laughs> Bro- yeah, uh, promise. It's gonna be a good one, man. I think the winner of this fight's gonna get signed to the UFC. I know he had a, he had a that was my question. That was my question. I just, I just remembered as, as, as you said it. So, like, um, I, I know it's, you know, it's silly to say, you know, what are you thinking about next? Because what you're thinking about next is, is winning a fight, winning your next fight. Um, but even, but sure. even, but even in, in, uh, you know, in your, in your victory over, um, over, what was? I'm trying to remember. The, I'm looking at the note right now. Okay, your most recent one over, over Brandon Noble. They're like, hey, you know, sign him, Dana White, sign him, and the WXC is, um. It's owned by the UFC. They're like considered what what is what is considered a feeder league or or like a developmental league. Um, they're sure. at, you know Invicta. Although like at this point, it's like you guys are pretty good. Like it seems like you guys are pretty like well polished. So I wouldn't say as far as like developmental. 
Um, but you know, what do you have? Have you put any thoughts into that? Like as as to what your what your next your, what your next steps or what your next plans are, are going to be? That that's that's it. My manager, um, after this fight, um, you know, we 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 believe the winner of this fight is going to get signed. I mean, I he so had an defense against T. Edwards. Man, that sucks. Man, yeah. he had an opportunity. And he made a, you know, made made a slight error. Yeah. Uh, but this is like his second chance. I mean, he's coming in, man. This is his second chance on Contender Series, basically. Yeah. You know, and I'm getting a lot of flack. You know, oh, you know, he's gonna be too big, too powerful. Listen, motherfuckers, I've been doing this a long motherfucking time. I've never been knocked out. I'm durable as fuck, and I, and that's my best attribute, my dur- durability. But as to your question, yes, after I, uh, after I beat Austin Tweedy. Sean Shelby, come on, man. Do me a favor, man. Sign me up. I'll fight for fucking – I'll fight anybody at any weight, any time, Monday through Sunday after church. There you go. After church. Fucking motherfuckers up after church. Listen, right. if, if, it were, if it were up to me, I would give you both contracts. I, I, love, I watch, love watching both of you fight. Um, obviously, you've been doing it for long enough. I, you know, you're both exciting fighters. Um, yes. It's, it's not like – You, you, you got to understand, combined between both of us, combined – we have 23 finishes. 23. You know, 20 of those finishes are in the first round. Come on. What the fuck? We're get not, him in we're there. Not, we're not playing checkers. We're playing fucking chess around here, boy. Hey, if fucking Greg Hardy can get a shot, let's get let's let's get these guys some shots. Tell me about it. Fuck. <laughs> Listen, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Sorry for the little mishap earlier before oh, the, the, with the call dropping. I'd love to have sure. you back on whenever you feel like it, Mr. Jaynes. Um, you know, I, I had a great time. As you can tell, I love to talk, so shoot me a message. I'm down I'm down to chop it up anytime you want. Catchweight update, y'all. <sighs> Catchweight interview number 15. What a blast. Thank you so much, Justin Janes, um, especially with the circumstance of me reaching out to you. Um, you know, I interviewed your opponent, and then I reached out to you, and you were more than more than likely to oblige. Um, you know, I'm very, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for everybody that makes my show great. Um you know, this is why I do it. I, 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 I want to put myself in the middle of the, in the mix. Um, and in the mix in this situation is May 29th. May 29th is going to be Warrior Wednesday the 3rd. Um, this is something, this is why I have Fight Pass. I, this matchup is why I have Fight Pass. Now, I didn't get Fight Pass in the hopes of them fighting. Like, I knew they were going to fight. I got this in the hopes that I would watch high-level competition fuck each other up and that's exactly what they're gonna do that's what they plan on doing these are two finishers they have over 20 finishes between the two of them um you know justin james is a veteran he's been doing this for a long time he's been in the business for a long time he fights out of extreme couture in las vegas uh shouts out to rodney james edgar uh journalist that I had on here um this this is going to be a, a clash of the titans this is this is what you this is what you want to see you want to see people who get yelled at for wrestling too much or getting on top of each other i just don't foresee that i mean it could and i would love to see that too they're both like pretty good grapplers but at the end of the day like they're gonna they're in they want to one of them wants to knock the other one out both or both of them both of them want to knock each other out um exact words from austin tweedy i can't wait to punch this guy in the face and then you know justin james with his barbs so um I'm super excited. Uh, I'm super thankful. You know, it, the only thing that's like a bummer is like, I like both of them. Um, and even if I didn't like both of them, I wouldn't choose a side. Um, I do like both of them just as people. Like they're both great people and they have no real like hate animosity. Um, any animosity they have is because of the circumstance they're in. It's because they're about to fight each other. Um, it's it's uh it's gonna be a good fight. This is why you have UFC fight pass. If you don't have UFC fight pass, you're missing out. You know, Invicta was like last week they had uh, the the Phoenix series that was fucking awesome or Phoenix Rising series I think it was called. One round, five minutes, put it all out there, and it was like, it was like a tournament style. Um, you know, between that and the Warrior Wednesdays at WXC, it's just there's just if you are a fan of fighting, it does not make sense to not have fight pass. Just go get it. Just ten dollars a month. You can't swing ten dollars a month. You can't ask your mom for ten dollars a month. You fucking loser. Go get fucking fight pass. Don't call yourself a fan if you don't have. It doesn't make sense if you don't have it. You're what if you're truly a fan, right? You want to see the top of the line talent. It's like people who like kind of watch the NFL. You don't watch the draft, or you don't watch the. You know, the prospects. We're watching these. Some of these guys aren't even pro. They're just developed athletes. They're just developed athletes just fucking people up. So, 
like, what more can you ask for? And ESPN Plus is pretty cool, too. It's $15 total. You get all the UFC and everything. Everything that you need in the UFC. Um, and then, uh, and then feeder leagues, you know, you get, you get, you get, you get to put your ear to the street. Um, moral of the story is this is going to be great. May 29th, Warrior Wednesday, the third, this is going to be fireworks, fireworks. It doesn't get better than this. It does not. I, I should just make t-shirts at this point. I said it all the fucking time. I know it's stupid. Um, but I feel very strongly about this main event. It is, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Um, that being said, what else do we have lined up? Um, I think we have a couple more interviews. I don't want to announce them yet. They're in different time zones, so you know how that goes. You know, schedules have to line up. Um, but I will give you a hint. This gentleman's from the UK. Um, I'm not going to give a hint to the promotion, but it's, you know, it's well known. Um, you know, I'm excited for it. You know, he reached out to me, so that's usually a good sign. Um I'll make a more formal announcement if when when we do the interview. Um, shouts out to first round management again. Thank you so much for. I mean, like without first round management, I would not be able to make the storyline that we have here. Um, this is an interesting storyline to have between Austin Tweedy and Justin James. Uh, I'll give a, I guess like I give a br- a brief breakdown of Justin James before we go on and and do uh, the podcast. Um, he is ve- you know like. He, you're going to hear the numbers, like how many fights he had in the podcast, but it's like, an obs- he's been fighting since he's 17 years old. Like, this is what he does at full time. You know, he trains at a, in a high level facility at uh, Extreme Couture. Um, he's been around some of the greats and he's worked with the greats and he's been training partners with the greats. Um, he's seen it all. So there's not a lot that Austin Tweedy's going to be able to bring to the table that he hasn't seen before. The only thing is just like, you know, seeing it and then dealing with it is another thing, right? So they have an enormous amount of respect for each other. Both Austin Tweedy and Justin James have an enormous amount of respect for each other. They have not said anything crazy disrespectful yet. Um, and most of that is because they don't have any, like, real hate or animosity towards each other. That being said, they know what they have to do. They know that door is going to lock. They know what they have to go inside to do. They've been studying each other. Both They're both highly intelligent. They're both very athletic. And as much, and I'm not going to give Justin James that slack. I know that's part of his thing. Um, you know, he I think he likes being underestimated. Um, I think he likes having people see who he is um, and just not marvel. Like, you know, Austin Tweedy is like a, like a freak athlete. And, um, Justin James, not that he's not an athlete. He's a, I think he's a great athlete, obviously, you know what I mean? He's got all the skills and accolades to like represent how good of an athlete he is. He's got all the highlight reels. I made a highlight reel, um, based off of what he's done. Um, he's a sneaky fucking athlete. Like you, you, you look at him like, okay, yeah, like he's, he's built, he looks athletic, but some of the things he's able to do with his body is unbelievable. Jumping punches to knockouts, ti- his timing's great. So, you know, it's just... I think he wants people to sleep on him. That way, when they get inside there, they go, oh, I can't knock this fucking guy out, and now I'm stuck in here with him. Or they get caught, <clears throat> which he's done several times. He has a lot of fights under his belt. Um, but the moral of the story is, like, j- the general consensus between Austin and the and between Justin is that after this fight, it, there's nowhere brought up, like, that. you know, they pretty much, they basically are going to line up that UFC contract. Um... This is Austin's second shot <clears throat> at, in, in order to make that transition. And then Justin's just been waiting. You know, there's not really much more he can do. Like, he's beat everybody, right? And then and then Austin's one of the one of the, uh, one of of the the highly touted guys coming out of that division. So it only makes sense. If it were up to me, I'd want both of them. I say it in a podcast. I want both of them to get contract. I want to see both of them fight all the time. So without any further ado, Justin Janes... Fighting out of Las Vegas, Extreme Couture. Um, This is the podcast, episode number 15. Thank you so much.